Hello, this is Ed Lau in Future Quarter from the Azure Security Center Customer Experience Team. Today we will be discussing the fundamentals of Azure Security Center and the goal of this presentation is to provide an overview of ASC. First, let's take a look at some industry trends and then we can get our feet wet in the portal. The technology footprint of most organizations is bigger than ever and the cloud has fundamentally changed how businesses operate. We are driving new ways of working, increased connectivity, new classes of devices, and capabilities we could only dream of just a few short years ago, all while driving improved business outcomes. These advancements also mean the cybersecurity landscape is evolving just as quickly. Malicious actors are now using new and more complex attack vectors to infiltrate environments and remain undetected. According to research from IBM, the average time to identify a compromise in 2019 was 206 days, with the average life cycle coming in at 314 days. This leaves a huge opportunity for malicious actors to cause damage or exfiltrate data. In the same year, the average cost of a data breach is estimated to be around $3.9 million. As more organizations shift technology into the cloud, it is important to understand how to effectively defend against malicious actors. The cloud kill chain model is a good reference to visualize how attackers can present a threat to an organization. The first phase is exposure, or opportunities to gain access to an organization's environment. Attackers often do so by exploiting vulnerabilities in customer-facing applications. The attacker will then use this vulnerability to gain access to the organization's infrastructure. This may come in the form of attacking exposed systems, gaining access to credentials, or taking advantage of vulnerable devices. After gaining access to the infrastructure, the attacker will discover specific resources they have access to within the organization to seek out internal data from the company as well as sensitive customer information. Azure Security Center is a unified security management system designed to mitigate and respond to actors at distinct stages in the kill chain. Azure Security Center's Cloud Security Posture Management, or CSPM, capabilities allow it to strengthen your organization's security posture by assessing the status of your resources and providing recommendations to improve their security posture. Security Center also functions as a Cloud Workload Protection Platform, CWPP, through Azure Defender to provide threat protection for both your Azure and non-Azure workloads. I will now turn things over to my colleague, Future, to demo the features of Azure Security Center and to discuss Azure Defender. Thank you for that introduction, Ed. Hello, everyone. My name is Future Quarter, and I'm a program manager at Microsoft's Azure Security Center Customer Experience Engineering Team. And today I'm going to be providing you all with a demo of Azure Security Center. So we can find Azure Security Center by using one of two methods. We can either click on it in the home screen. So we have it here under services under tools and in the left side pane. If none of these op options show up for you, you can go to the search bar and enter Azure Security Center as I've done previously and the green icon will show up. When we first enter the when we first enter Azure Security Center, we are met with the overview dashboard. And that provides us an at-a-glance look at the security posture of our environment. As you can see here, the dashboard shows us the secure score, regulatory compliance, inventory, and Azure Defender coverage. On the right side pane, we also see insights into the most prevalent resources. And at the bottom, we see a link to the Azure Security Center community. Let's start our demo by looking at the secure score. The main key performance indicator within Security Center is the, the secure score. And it's an essential part of Security Center's cloud security posture management capabilities. 
If we go to our subscription here, we can get more information. As you can see here, the secure score is a percentage and it represents the current, the current security posture of your environment. So here our secure score is 33% and it represents us gaining a total of 19 out of 58 points. Security Center will continuously assess your resources, subscriptions, and organizations for security issues and inform you of any threats through actionable rec recommendations. And right next to the secure score, we have the recommendation status. Right now, it's showing us that we have one completed control and 26 completed recommendations. Right next to that, we can also see our resource health where we have 81 unhealthy and four healthy resources. But if we scroll down, we can learn more about the recommendations. As you can see, the recommendations are grouped into security controls, which allow your organization to focus on recommendations that pertain to a certain scenario, such as MFA or multi-factor authentication. And the security controls are also organized in a top-down approach, which will allow you to prioritize your workload for potential score increase or address the most serious vulnerabilities pertaining to your environment. So as you can see, Enable MFA presents the biggest score in the biggest potential score increase for 10 points or a 17% increase in your secure score. And we also see the Enable MFA control. And underneath the Enable MFA control, we have different recommendations. And in order to earn this 10 point increase, we have to complete all the recommendations that are listed under Enable MFA. If we take a look at other controls, we see that they're accompanied with recommendations that also have the Quick Fix button. And the Quick Fix button is available to allow you to select unhealthy resources and apply a remediation that will launch a, rem a remediation action to configure the settings on your behalf. And we also have this preview button that also comes with some of the recommendations. And the recommendations that are tagged as preview are not included in the calculation of your secure score. However, they should still be remediated so that when this preview period ends, the recommendation will contribute to your secure score. Back in the main dashboard, we also have regulatory compliance. And regulatory compliance is a key part of Azure Security Center's CSPM capabilities as well because it's making sure that you're following industry standards. Customers can also export a report and share this report with stakeholders to specifically lay out how the company is meeting these industry standards. And you can do so by clicking this download report button. And when this pane shows up, you can select a standard and from there, you can also select a format that you want to download the compliance status report. If we take a closer look at the regulatory compliance window, we see here that we have the regulatory compliance assessment chart or graph, and it's showing us the number of failed assessments as well as the number of past assessments. We also see here lowest compliance regulatory standards. And on the side, we have the standards listed out as well as the number of past controls out of the number of total controls present. So for example, for SOC TSP, we've only passed one of 13 controls. If we go down, we can also see the, the standards listed out again. And if we click on a specific standard, so if we click on SOC TSP, we can see all the compliance controls and if we click on them, we can see which specific assessments align with these compliance controls and how we're doing in terms of meeting these assessments. Back on the Security Center dashboard, we also have Azure Defender. And Azure Defender addresses Security Center's cloud workload protection platform capabilities. 
So previously we discussed the CSPM capabilities with secure score and regulatory compliance. So now we're gonna look at the CWPP capabilities. And Azure Defender is able to do this by providing advanced threat protection for both your IaaS and PaaS resources. And these capabilities can be extended to resources hosted, resources hosted in other cloud providers and on premises. So here we can see our total Azure Defender coverage. We see that we have 18 out of 18 servers that are covered under Azure Defender, as well as other resources that are covered under Azure Defender and the specific number of them that are covered. And if we want to upgrade, we can simply click the upgrade button to upgrade these resources. Underneath that, we also have security alerts and we can see here a timeline of the security alerts on the bottom, as well as the severity of the alerts and the number of alerts that occurred on the, the side. And we see here that we have alerts organized by high severity, medium severity, and low severity. And under advanced protection, we see more of the advanced threat protection capabilities provided by Azure Defender. Azure Defender can help protect your environments from brute force attacks using the just-in-time VM access. And just-in-time access uses NSG rules to limit the amount of time your management ports stay open. And this is helpful for preventing the attacker from gaining access into your infrastructure by limiting the amount of time that your ports are staying open. Adaptive network hardening is also useful for limiting access to open ports. And adaptive network hardening is applying machine learning to further harden your network security rules to filter traffic to and from resources. So this machine learning algorithm analyzes traffic, known trusted configurations, and threat intelligence to provide recommendations to only allow traffic from specific ports. And next we have adaptive application control. And Azure Defender also helps you identify malware through adaptive application control. And adaptive application control is also using machine learning, but this time it's using it to create a custom allow list for which applications can run on your machines. And Azure Security Center will then notify you through the security alerts if any applications are running aside from the ones that are defined as safe. In the advanced protection section, we also have vulnerability assessments. So we have the, the virtual machine vulnerability assessments and SQL vulnerability assessment. And Azure Defender for servers includes a vulnerability scanner that is powered by a third party scanner called Qualys. And users don't need a Qualys license or account to benefit from Azure Defender's integrated vulnerability scanner. The Qualys extension will collect information for analysis in the Qualys cloud server. And once the vulnerability assessment is completed, the Qualys extension will report its findings to Azure Security Center. And if we go back here, Azure Defender for SQL also includes this built-in vulnerability assessment. And this vulnerability assessment uses Microsoft's security best practices to make sure that your databases meet data privacy standards and compliance requirements. And the built-in scanner includes actionable steps for each identified issue and remediation script. And next we have file integrity monitoring. And file integrity monitoring allows users to be alerted if suspicious modifications have been made to any files that are critical to the operating system or application. Through Azure Change Tracking Solution, file integrity monitoring will compare the previous state of the files to the, to the most recent in order to identify any changes. And finally, we have this network map. And this map is very interactive. As we can see here, the topology map starts with your subscription, which is this key icon. 
And then in the inner circle, it would show you all your VNets within the subscription. And the next circle after that will show you all your subnets. And finally, the last circle is showing you all your virtual machines. And the lines that are represented here in the map show you how all these resources are associated with each other, which allow you to see how your network is structured. The network topology map is also interactive. As we can see here, we can filter by the security health, as well as recommendations and network zones. So we've just learned about Azure Defender by touching on advanced protection, security alerts, and Azure Defender coverage. And now I'm sure you're wondering, how much does all of this cost me? Two tiers when it comes to pricing. So we have Azure Defender Off, which is the free tier, and we have Azure Defender On, which is where we'd have to pay for some of these advanced threat protection capabilities. So with Azure Defender Off, which is the Azure Security Center free tier, users have access to the security policy and security center's continuous assessments. So this allows you to see the secure score and view the recommendations associated uh, with each control. But with Azure Defender On, you also have the same features included in Azure Defender Off or the ASC free tier, in addition to the advanced threat protection capabilities that we discussed with Azure Defender. And if you scroll further down, you can see the cost associated with Azure Defender for each particular resource. And you can turn on Azure Defender for these resources by clicking Plan On or turn it off by clicking Plan Off. But it's also important to note that the users have a free 30-day trial when first starting out with Azure Security Center. And this gives you the freedom to play around with the product and see if you like it. In this video, we were first introduced to the significance of cybersecurity by learning about the evolving security landscape, which was presented by my colleague Ed Lau. Then we were able to learn more about how Azure Security Center will help you maintain your security posture by looking at both its CSPM and CWPP capabilities. Here we talked about the secure score, regulatory compliance, and some Azure Defender features. I hope you found this presentation and this demo to be helpful. To learn more about Azure Security Center, please check out the Become an Azure Security Center Ninja training by going to aka.ms slash ASC Ninja and visit the documentation on docs.microsoft.com. Thank you so much and I hope to see you again soon.